So, Senator, in your brand new memoir, you describe the mm -hmm. moments before your family fled Cambodia just two weeks before the Khmer Rouge took over the capital, and you write in part this. In later years, when I asked my mom about our family experience in Cambodia, she would describe this time as a difficult one. While my memories are of colorful street scenes and fresh bread, hers are of being mostly confined to our gated home as the fighting closed in on the capital. It must have been incredibly stressful for her, worrying about the safety of her young children in a war zone that was only growing hotter. She also never knew if my dad would return home safely each night from his job sites across the city. Yet, when most Americans started flooding out, in early 1975, my dad insisted that we stay. He believed that there was no way the United States would allow Cambodia to fall to the communists, and that any day American troops would arrive to fight the Khmer Rouge. But as the fighting drew ever closer to our home, my dad finally realized that he couldn't keep us there anymore. Mike Barnacle. Senator, you have an extraordinarily compelling life story. In 2004, uh, your helicopter that you were flying was hit by an RPG. You thus today are two things. You're a double amputee, but you're also one of the few members of the House and Senate with combat experience. So in the wake of January 6th, I'd like to ask you what you thought when you saw many, many of the rioters using flagpoles with the American flag attached to attack police officers. And what does that combat experience, which lingers and never disappears in your mind, I'm sure, how does that impact you on your everyday job in the United States Senate? What do you think of when you think of your duties as a senator? Well, um, the title of my book is Every Day is a Gift. And every day for me literally is a gift, a gift given to me my, by my buddies uh, who carried me out of that, that, that dusty field in Iraq. Um, and every day I wake up and I say a prayer of thanks to the men who saved me, and I try to live up to their sacrifices. If you read the book, um, you know, you'll see, uh, I, I go into detail what that shoot down day was like. And every day, that's my guiding principle, my North Star. On that day, January 6th, I was furious. I was so mad. I was upset that these so-called people who call themselves patriots would use the very same flag that I used to wear on my uniform going to combat in order to breach the Capitol and attack our nation's capital and attack our democracy. Um, I knew that I was I could keep myself safe. So that combat experience helped, you know, to this day, no, no, no matter where I am, I know where the exits are and I know where there's an alternate exit. Whatever room I'm in, it just it just lingers uh, in you. Um, so I, I knew how to take care of myself. But I was mostly mad um, and, and feeling very powerless because I wanted to deal with the situation. And the only thing I could do was to barricade myself safely in a room so that I would not be another person that the Capitol Police needed to worry about securing so that they knew that I was fine. They didn't have to worry about me. But, um, you know, after all the, those years of service and after having, you know, lived part in Cambodia as a child and, and watching people flee and, and how much America was respected, to see Americans attack our own democracy was, whew, it was, it was depressing. It was upsetting, mm. um, but mostly it made me mad. You know, um, Senator, I, I, I'm remembering my dad today, uh, who passed away. It's it, it today's his birthday, but a couple of days ago, Mika's father, uh, it was Mika's father's birthday, yes. and she put up an Instagram post and talked with her mother a great deal about it. And their story is a story of immigrants who were fleeing the horrors of of Hitler. Uh, your story. Uh, is is equally inspiring. Uh, your family coming to America to flee the horrors of the Khmer Rouge and and the genocide that followed that. Uh, it just it just I, I know with the Brzezinski's I, they 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 oftentimes when they were concerned about America's direction and path, it hurt them even more because they knew how special this country was to them as immigrants, because they saw the other side. Same exact thing with you, and this book lays that out beautifully. Can you talk about, even through our bad times, talk about what America has meant to you while you sacrificed so much for this country as an immigrant, and what message other Americans, uh, who may have been born here, 
uh, need to hear, what they may be missing, because a lot of people that were born here, I found, don't have the love for this country uh, as much as many who immigrated here. Right. Well, I'm not an immigrant. I'm, I'm a daughter of the American Revolution. My fa my family's uh, mm -hmm. on my dad's side has been here since before even we were a country. We we fought in the uh, Revolutionary War, but we also fought in the French and Indian Wars. On my mother's side, my mother's Thai, we were in Cambodia because my dad's job with the United Nations refugee programs and humanitarian service, um, and, and we stayed there uh, rendering aid as long as we possibly could before we left. Um, but this book, you're right, is this is a, really a love letter to my country, to my nation. And I started writing it because my daughter, who's now six, Abigail, is finally understanding that mommy's a little bit different from other mommies. Mommy really doesn't have legs. You know, to her, I'm normal. But she started to say, but mommy, if you had legs, why did you give them up? And I said, well, I served as a soldier. And she said, well, why? Why would you do that? And and, and you and you don't have legs. And now now you can't you know, you can't do a lot of things with me, mommy. And and. And why is that? So I wanted to write this book for my daughters to explain why everything that I went through, the service in Iraq, losing my legs, was worth it. It was worth it because this is a great nation. And I talk about time after time, I saw the greatness of America uh, from a child growing up overseas as an American. But then also when we were in trouble in Hawaii and I talk about being so poor that I was selling roses out of a bucket by the side of the road. Um, there were food stamps to help me. There was a safety net. There was a free school so that I could actually finish high school. Um, that, that, that all along the way, this country, whenever we were on our knees and we didn't give up, this country was said, we're here. We're gonna here's, a, here's a helping hand to help you fight your way back. And now I'm a United States senator. This could never happen anywhere else. So this book is really a love letter to my country, but also an explanation mm -hmm. to my girls why it was worth it and why I would do it all over again. Well, Senator, first oh, of all, I, I apologize for, for not, not hearing the story correctly, but what an incredible, what an incredible story, what an incredible life you've had. And uh, we just thank you so much for your service in uniform, your sacrifice in uniform, but more importantly right now, your service to the country with what you do every day. The new memoir is called Every Day is a Gift. Senator Tammy Duckworth, thank you so much. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.